All right, so here was the first one. You had to multiply out 24 times 24, and you should have gotten 576, and then 45 times 45, uh, 2,601. Add those together, and you'll see that it equals 51 times 51, which is 2,601. So this is a right triangle, okay? I know some of you are, are cheating and using a calculator because you got it right in front of you, but keep in mind that you're gonna have to multiply all that stuff out on your quiz, okay? Numbers two and three said to decide if the segment lengths can form. Thank you for correcting my typo, Sophia. Uh, for a triangle, if so, determine whether the triangle is acute, right, or obtuse. So for number two, remember that the biggest one should be by itself. So number two, the biggest one, we're approximating 17 is like 4.1. Um, and then I know that three times 4.1 is gonna be bigger than 12. So if I add up the other two, I know this is a triangle. Remember, you wanna check that first. Add up the smaller two, make sure it's bigger than the last one. And this one is. And then from there, I'd get three root 17 squared, which becomes nine times 17 or 153. And then seven squared and 11 squared is 49 plus 121. 153 is less than 170, so this is acute. I go to number three, and it's trickier because the 9.2 is in the middle. Remember that the biggest, when you write it out, should be first, so just be careful. And then again, I would check to make sure the other two, the smaller two, add up to be bigger than the third one before I even start it because if there's no triangle then it saves me a lot of work. So if I add 4.1 and 5.6 I get 9.7 that is bigger than the third so I know to continue. 9.2 squared is 84.64, 4.1 is 16.81 and 5.6 is 31.36. So 84.64 is bigger than 48.17 which makes it obtuse. And the last one, a playground has a slide, a swing, and a sandbox. The slide and swing are 50 feet apart. The swing and the sandbox are 32. And the slide and the sandbox are 48 feet apart. Do the three pieces of the apparatus form a right triangle? And they do not. If you do 48 squared plus 32 squared, you get uh, 1,024 plus 2,304. And those two combined does not equal 2,500, which is 50 squared. Wait, so... Yeah, so I tend to put the C first because for me it makes sense that if it's less then it's acute and if it's greater then it's obtuse, but if you flip it then obviously it's flipped. Yeah. Any other questions on the warm up? Two, seven, three. So seven, three is use similar right triangles. So this entire chapter is right triangle base, right? So we talked first about how do I make it a right, what, if it's a right triangle, what to do with it, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Then we talked about what to do, what's the converse mean, and then using the similar right triangles is what we're going to do with it. So there's a couple theorems we're going to learn about right triangles that you can apply. All right, so we start with something called a geometric mean. A geometric mean, <clears throat> excuse me, is found by square rooting the product of two numbers. So if I gave you two numbers and I asked for ge its geometric mean, you just multiply the two together, put it underneath the square root, and simplify it. A lot of times it comes from something like a over x equals x over b, where you have a proportion with a repeated term. So if I had solved this, if I cross multiplied, I would have gotten a times b equals x squared, and x would equal the square root of a times b. So this, we just give it a name, it's called the geometric mean. So example one says find the geometric mean of the given numbers. A is 4 and 20. So actually we have two ways to do this. One is multiply 4 times 20 and then square root it. 4 times 20, square root 80, and then I got to break it down. 2 and 40, 2 and 20, 2 and 10, 2 and 5, and for each pair of a number one of those numbers goes to the outside. So there's one, two, there's a second two, and then the five is by itself, so it's gonna stay underneath. This is four root five, okay? That's one way to do it. Multiply it out and then break it down. But if we are going to have to break it down anyways, why are we multiplying it out to begin with? Which is what I would recommend to do. Take that four times the 20, don't even multiply it out. This one's not so hard to multiply out, but you don't need to. Break it down from there. Two and two, two and 10, 
two, and five, and I still have one, two, a second two, and a single five. So save yourself the extra step of multiplying and then breaking it down again, and just keep it separate from the beginning. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So then nine and 25 would be what? Three and three, and five and five, which becomes? Good, three times five or 15. Which you would get if you multiply those out. If you multiply them out, it's 225. 225 is a perfect square. But you don't need to do that extra step. Easy stuff, right? That's called the geometric mean. Theorem 7-5. Remember, the number is not important, but what it says is, it says if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, so this actually needs to be a right angle, and it's super hard to make on PowerPoint, so we're just going to draw it in. Then the two triangles formed are similar to the original triangle and to each other. So you could completely prove this using angle angle every time, but you don't need to because the theorem tells you that. The altitude is drawn. So remember, altitude is this segment that goes from the vertex to the opposite side, forming a right angle. If it's drawn to the hypotenuse, which this is, then the two triangles formed, God bless you, meaning this small purple triangle and this smaller blue triangle are similar to the original large triangle and to each other. So we can make a similarity statement. We can say that triangle, do the big one, A, B, C is similar to, now pay attention to the order we went. We said A to B to C, which is the longer leg, to the hypotenuse. So we have to follow those patterns. So if I use the one on the left, Nope, longer leg to hypotenuse. CDA. I think you tried every combination possible. Yeah. No, D A C. Longer leg to the hypotenuse. You see that? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then the last one is the one on the right. What's the longer leg into the hypotenuse order? Mm -mm. D, B, A. Well, they have an A, but a, not angle A, right? Yeah. yeah. So if I, let's, let's try it again a different way. Let's say when I started with my beginning triangle, I said hypotenuse to shorter leg. So let's say I said triangle, hypotenuse to shorter leg, B, C, A. Then what would I have to call the smaller triangle? The smaller one's C, A, mm -mm. Uh, C, D, A, C, D, A. Mm -mm. A, C, D. I said hypotenuse to smaller leg. Yes, you see it? Oh, yeah. A, C, D. So what do I have to call the other one? B, A, D. Hypotenuse to smaller leg. Yes? Be careful because if you switch up those letters, it's wrong, right? Whatever you establish first is up to you. But if that is given to you or you establish that once you establish that pattern, you have to continue on in that same pattern. The order of the letters is important. So whatever you establish, if I went longer leg into the shorter leg, or if I went longer leg into the hypotenuse, I have to continue on that same pattern with the other two. All right, second theorem in the section is the geometric mean altitude theorem. We just got a whole lot of words for something that can be put in proportion. It says, in a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse divides the hypotenuse into two segments. 
the length of the altitude is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments. Basically, this is how I state it. I don't even put any of those words. I say segment one over altitude equals altitude over segment two. So when you've got your right triangle, which is like this, first thing you gotta do is say, okay, here's my altitude. I know it's an altitude because it goes from vertex to the other side at a right angle. When that happens, it divides my hypotenuse into two segments. And I call them segment one and segment two and the order there doesn't matter. I could call it segment two, then segment one or segment one, doesn't matter. And the ratio is that the segment one over the altitude equals the altitude over segment two. So you see that this is a repeated segment, which is why it's the geometric mean. Sometimes you're given the segment one and the altitude. Sometimes you're given segment one and segment two. Sometimes you're given the altitude and segment two. You will be given two of those three things and then you just cross, multiply, and divide. And theorem seven is, seven is called the geometric mean leg theorem. Again, a whole bunch of words. In a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse divides the hypotenuse into two segments. Same beginning statement. The length of each leg of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to the leg. In ratio form, it's this. Hypotenuse over leg equals leg over the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. So I'll even like, obviously now we've written it out, make an acronym for this. Segment of hypotenuse adjacent to the leg, okay? We won't have to write that out every time. So hypotenuse over leg equals leg over segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. Again, this big triangle should be a right triangle. How many legs are in a right triangle? Two. Two. So you can do this for either leg, but you're using the same leg both times. So if I wanna find X, then I do the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is C, over the leg, which is X, equals the leg, which is X, over, remember that hypotenuse is divided into two segments, A and B, which of those segments is adjacent to X? A, a right, adjacent means? Next two. Next two. If I wanted to use Y, then again, hypotenuse is C over the leg, which is Y, equals the same leg, which is Y, over the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg, which is B, which is B exactly. Also the yep, and then you cross multiply and divide. Again, you will give in two of those three lengths, you use it to find the other one. All right. So here's some application. Again, this needs to have the right angle at the top. If JR is, actually let me. If JR is 16, so this one's 16 here, and EJ is nine, find HJ, so we call that X, find RE, call that Y, find RH, and find H-E. Let's I don't know, make up letters, okay? Easiest one to find would be R-E, right? I just gotta add 16 and nine to get that, that'd be 25. So R-E is 25. If I wanna find H-J, what's, the, what's that segment called in the triangle? Altitude. altitude. If I wanna find an altitude, how can I find it? Nine over X equals X over Good. So it, altitude. Or segment one, actually. Let me do it anyway. Segment one over altitude equals altitude over segment two. In this case, nine over x equals x over 16. Cross multiply, x squared equals nine times 16. Do you wanna multiply that out if I'm just gonna have to square root it? No. So I say x equals the square root of nine times 16. This is three and three. This is four and four. So three times four is 12. If you multiply it, you get 144. Square root of 144 is 12, it's fine. Okay, either way. So hj is 12. 
Now I want RH or Z on that right hand side. How do I do that? What's the other theorem? Yeah, um, C over y equals so 12 over. Let's do it in words first so we remember the pattern. What comes in the numerator of that first one? Mm -mm. Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse over leg equals leg over segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. Okay? So the hypotenuse of this big triangle, right? That's what we're using. Hypotenuse of that big triangle is what? 12, 12. Oh, nope. No, no, sorry. Nope. Hypotenuse of the big triangle. That's what that means. 25. 25 over the leg that we're looking for, which we called Z. Equals the leg, which repeats. Now what's the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg? 16. Cross multiply, Z squared equals 25 times 16. Z is going to equal the square root of 25 times 16, or 5 times 4. Good. Should we get the Z? I just added it on there. The Z? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just added it. Does it have to be Z or can you just make No, I just made it up. Yeah, yeah. You could make it HR if you wanted to. I just made it one letter less. All right, then HE, this last one we called A over here. It's also a leg, right? So I'm going to do the same setup, except this time my adjacent legs, the segment adjacent is going to be different. So 25 over A equals A over 9. Good. 25 over A equals A over 9. A squared equals 9 times 25. A equals square root of 9 times 25, or 3 times 5. So once you have two legs of your triangle, those two tri smaller triangles are still right triangles. So once I had 12 and 16, you can do the Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse there, which was that Z that we labeled. And once I have the 9 and the 12 here, I could do A. Usually, they won't all be combined into one. So you'd have to do them separately. But once they are, if they are combined all into one, which happens every once in a while, of course, you could do both ways. But isn't that too long? Uh, it depends. Sometimes the numbers aren't so bad. Sometimes they're triples, and then it's super easy. Yeah. Okay, B, I just like duplicated it, so same question. Again, J, R, this time it's four. J, H is two. It wants you to find E, J first, so let's start there. This is my segment one over altitude equals altitude over segment two. Segment one is X. Altitude is two. Altitude repeats. Segment two is four. I can either cross multiply or simplify across, doesn't matter. 4x equals 4, x equals 1. So sometimes what's given to you is the one that doesn't repeat and you don't have to square root. Oops, I wrote on the wrong one. This is 1. RE is x plus 4. We just said x was 1, right? Mm -hmm. RE is 5. RH is my leg. So I could do the Pythagorean theorem or... I could do hypotenuse over leg. Let me call it Y so I don't confuse ourselves. Over Good. Equals leg over segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg, which in this case is 4. Y squared equals 5 times 4. Y would equal the square root of 5 times 4, or 2 root 5. And the last one is HE. I'll call it Z. Again, I could do the Pythagorean theorem on the whole triangle, the big one, on the small one on the left, or hypotenuse over leg equals leg over segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg, which is 1. Z squared is 5, and Z would equal the square root of 5. So if you have extra time, you can go back and check your work by doing the Pythagorean theorem, and it should still be true. Questions? Man, that was good timing. I'll fix my whatever I messed up on that homework thing, but that's it. So homework for tonight is going to be 7-3, and then tomorrow we'll review 7-1 to 7-3. Quiz on Friday of all the stuff we covered this week. Have a great day, guys. You're good, come on. You're getting your candy now. Oh. Oh, this one's good.
so it's really sweet. Have a good day, Brian. So for this one, you put um, this as the hypotenuse. As the hypotenuse. Why? Because it's not the biggest one. You're welcome. It is the biggest one. So this, we can approximate to be like 4.1, right? Yeah. 3 times 4.1 would be like 12.3. Oh, okay. But if you don't see it from there, have a good day. When you square it, you get 9 times 17, right? The product of that is going to be bigger than 121 and 49. So that's the other way you can double check it. After you square them, the three individually, the biggest square should be by itself. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay.